WSMP4 News at 10 starts now with this breaking news alert. There were so many police cars and then the ambulances started coming away from the school. Grief gripping the mid-state tonight after a shooter opened fire inside the Covenant School, killing three kids and three staffers. Metro Police releasing new information tonight on the shooter and how they were able to get inside. Our investigations tell us that she was a former student uh, at the school. And a call to action by President Biden. Uh, we have to do more to stop gun violence. It's ripping our communities apart. We're following the very latest on this mass shooting in Nashville as our community focuses on healing. The news at 10 starts right now. All right, breaking tonight at 10, new video shows how a shooter gained access to that Nashville school to unleash a deadly attack. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Amanda Hara. And I'm Marius Payton. Right now, our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the three kids and the three adults killed in that deadly shooting at the Covenant School. Now, Metro Police have just released surveillance video of the moments that suspect entered the school. And a warning before we go any further, this video may be difficult to watch. We're going to show that to you now. As it begins, we see the car rolling into the parking lot of the church. Mm -hmm. And this next shot, we're going to see something interesting here, Marius. Yeah, we, you could see how nonchalantly this car is driving through the parking lot. This car is central to the investigation, but we can also see children in the background playing in a playground as this car drives up. Yeah, this is a shot right here. Look in the upper right hand corner of your screen. You see children on a playground swinging oblivious as to what has just parked in that parking lot. Now the next shot you're going to see here, watch the windows of the doors. They are going to be blown out right there. You see that the windows are blown out by gunshots and then you will see the alleged shooter, Audrey Hale, climb through the door. And we see as she comes into view that she, uh, we see that the suspected shooter, Hale, is wearing tactical gear. You'll see that come into frame here as the suspected shooter then walks through the hallway, um, casually walking through the hallway with a gun in hand, turns to walk through this door, but you can see that that vest, the vest is being worn there. And if you look closely, you could see two assault rifles as well as a nine millimeter pistol attached to her back, but you could see both the assault rifle, one in her hand, one uh, strapped to the waist. You could see it right there. She's looking for uh, any movement in the building right now. You can also see that fire alarm is also going off. Mm -hmm. And it's unclear how that alarm was triggered, um, how it became triggered, but we do see the flashing lights there within the hallway to indicate that there is some sort of alarm that has been activated. Um, our next shot, we're going to see uh, the shooter walking down another hallway after looking through that door and it should move to another frame here. Now keep in mind this happened at 1013. Well, police got the first call at 1013 this morning and we know that it ended 14 minutes later at 1027 when that shooter was pronounced dead after engaging with two Metro uh, Nashville police officers. All right, this is where the video ends that we just received from Metro Nashville police. Police say the attacker had plans to open fire at multiple locations. Yeah, our Lydia Fielder starts our team coverage with new details, including what police found at the scene. Lydia. Yeah, Mari's Amanda, we have learned that that was a targeted attack. We've also learned Metro Police found a manifesto from the shooter, Audrey Hale. Police have just released their driver's license photo. This is what we're looking at here. The first photo we have seen of the suspect outside of that video. Police say that the manifesto reveals Hale had plans for shootings at multiple locations. We are now seeing pictures of the guns Hale used in the shooting. You saw in the video strapped across their back. Metro Nashville police shared these photos. Hale was armed, as Maria said, with two AR style weapons, one a rifle, another a pistol and this handgun here. Police say two of those Hale bought legally locally here in Nashville. They say Hale also had significant ammunition with them, saying Hale was ready for a confrontation with police. In fact, a big question was how Hale got inside. Well, it was just answered with that video as well as by police. Police say all the school doors were locked, so Hale got in by shooting through them and making entrance those pictures you see here. Even further, as police started arriving on campus, 
Hail fired at them through the upstairs windows. The bullet holes you're looking at are photos of those second story windows as well as in the police cruiser windshield. In the face of that, five Metro Nashville police officers sprang into action. Metro Police Chief John Drake says Hale was planning to do more harm than was done thanks to the quick action of those officers. I was hoping this day would never ever come here in the city, but we would never wait to make entry and to go in and to stop a threat, especially when it deals with our children. Yet Chief Drake says in the surveillance video, you can hear gunfire as officers eventually enter the building, then they shoot and kill Hale. Police say they could release that video, that full video, as early as tonight. Now, we just got a glimpse at some of it, and of course, they're going to continue processing the scene at the school and the church through tomorrow. Marius, Amanda. Lydia, thank you so much. And new tonight, we're hearing from Covenant School following this tragedy. All right, here's a statement coming from the school tonight. Our community is heartbroken. We're grieving tremendous loss and are in shock coming out of the terror that shattered our school and church. We're focused on loving our students, our families, our faculty and staff and beginning the process of healing. It goes on to say we appreciate the outpouring of support we have received and we are tremendously grateful to the first responders who acted quickly to protect our students, faculty and staff. We ask for privacy as our community grapples with this terrible tragedy for our students, parents, faculty and staff. Well, three children all between eight and nine years old are among the dead. The head of the school, a custodian, a substitute teacher, were also killed by the shooter. WSMV's Brendan Tierney is here with a closer look at the victims that are being remembered tonight. Brendan. Arias and Amanda, we've learned that one of the children was actually the daughter of the church's pastor. The others were beloved members of the school community that is heartbroken tonight after this school shooting. Now, police have confirmed the victims are Evelyn Dickhouse, Hallie Scruggs, William Kenny, Cynthia Peake, Catherine Kuntz and Mike Hill. We have been able to get pictures and more information about many of them to share with you tonight. Starting with Hallie Scruggs, who is in the third grade at the school. Her aunt tells us that the nine year old was the daughter of the Covenant Presbyterian Church pastor. She was best friends with her cousin Chad, who's in the photo with her here. Going on now to Catherine Coons, who is the head of school at Covenant Presbyterian. A family friend says that she had worked there for seven years. She moved to Nashville after growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and going to LSU. Catherine's bio says she worked at Christ Presbyterian Academy before joining Covenant. And we talked with one of her former students from there who says that he has learning disabilities and it helped her a lot throughout it. Special needs is there's too many people that encounter special needs and then think that that kid is just lazy and they just give up. You know what I mean? There's too many educators that give up too quickly. Um, there's not enough of people like her. Cynthia Peake was a substitute teacher at Covenant Presbyterian. A family friend says that she lived in Alabama for most of her life and recently moved to Nashville with her husband. She has a daughter and two sons that are also pictured here. Mike Hill was a custodian at the school. His former boss says that he worked there for more than 13 years and would do anything for his students. Now we have, of course, also reached out to family and friends of Evelyn and William, but have not heard back yet. And what's understandably a very difficult time for them. There's also a GoFundMe, though, that has raised nearly $30,000 for the victims' families with community coming together to support them. We have a link for that right now. If you want to donate, post it on our WSMV for News app. Marius. Brendan, thank you. Right now we're learning new details about 28 year old Audrey Hale, who police say is responsible for this mass shooting. Well, Chief Investigative Reporter Jeremy Finley is live from Hale's home in the Belmont area. And Jeremy, this home could hold important clues in the case. Absolutely, Amanda. Right now, Brightwood Avenue is open after being closed for much of the afternoon and the evening by police. New tonight, you can look behind me and see that they have put up a large sheet of plywood. That's to cover up the hole where police blew through using flash grenades this afternoon. Tonight, we watched as police carried bags of evidence out of this house. 
What started with one flash grenade quickly repeated as police used explosives to get into the home of accused mass shooter Audrey Hale. SWAT trucks everywhere. Uh, one had driven like right up and sort of looked like it had almost smashed into the front door. And so uh, then another, they sounded like, you know, stun grenades or percussive grenades went off. The Metro SWAT team came here after one o'clock this afternoon. Public records show the home is owned by Hale's parents. Police just releasing these images tonight, saying Hale drove this Honda Fit to the school and parked, and then opened fire on the doors on the side of the school. The weapons police say Hale carried dotted with graphic stickers. Inside the car, police say they found additional written material from Hale. Police say the 28-year-old who lived in this house had a manifesto and maps of the school. Tonight, detectives hauled out several brown evidence bags from inside the house, leaving neighbors wondering, what did they find inside? It is crazy. I mean, I'm walking through here all the time, you know, out and about around here. Like, it's just crazy to think about something like that could be going on right down, right down the street. All right, we are back here live on Brightwood Avenue, the home of Audrey Hale, the accused school shooter. Uh, we do know that Metro Police said that Audrey Hale had no prior criminal history and that two of the weapons were obtained legally. Marcus Amanda, back to you. Marius Amanda, back to you. All right, Jeremy Finley reporting for us tonight. Jeremy, thank you. This, of course, is an emotional day for so many people, especially with people that they love who were inside of that school. Yes, yeah, so many of them just dropped everything they were doing today and headed straight there. WSMV4's Courtney Allen has that story. There were so many police cars. And then the ambulances started coming away from the school. The sound of sirens filled Green Hills Monday. As parents flocked to the Covenant School, desperate to know if their children were okay. There's no words because they weren't letting the parents up there, so they were just running up the street. Three children and three staff members did not make it home. It's a feeling Shondell Brooks knows all too well. I'm angry because I know what these parents are feeling, you know, what they're going to be feeling. Her son, Aquila De Silva, was killed in the Waffle House shooting, fearing Monday she would lose another son. Every time something like this happens, it triggers. You know, I came running out here because I don't know what's going on. My son's school is locked down. I didn't know if he was still running, the shooter was still running around. I mean, this is ridiculous. WSMB4 saw trucks of law enforcement pass through and armed officers canvassing the woods around the school after eliminating the threat inside. Like, I don't know how somebody could go through with doing something like that. Avery Myrick's mom is a pre-K teacher at the Covenant School. I texted her and I said just like what was going on. She said she was hiding in the closet and that there was shooting all over and that they had potentially tried to get into her room and just that she like loved us. Myrick's mom did make it out alive, as did all these children getting hugs from loved ones, some parents carrying their children down Hillsborough Pike to safety. Definitely made me think over some things of just like, you know, I would definitely not want this to be the last time I ever spoke to her, so um, kind of just made me reflect. It's a reality no family should have to face. They're just not any worth I don't know how the I don't know how the parents get through it. Courtney Allen, WSMB4. Well, several vigils took place around Nashville this evening for the Covenant School. WSMV's Ryan Breslin is live at the Belonging Co. Church, where many prayed for victims and those families affected. Ryan. Hey, good evening to you, Marius. Gathering as a community can bring a sense of togetherness after a tragedy, and that's what people said that they needed tonight, to be with others, also mourning here in Nashville. <laughs> You know, the Bible says to mourn with those who mourn and uh, to, you know, to weep with those who weep. And that really is, is why we wanted to come together tonight. Congregating at the Belonging Co. Church, people turn to their faith Monday night to process their pain. It's challenging, honestly. It's, there's been a lot of tears today. So many sobbing during the public prayer. Some parishioners are families who send their children to the Covenant School. That's what's been hard today. This is, uh, Knowing that my, you know, my kids got up and went to school today and 
to know that other parents woke up this morning thinking, my kid's just going to school and they'll never see their kid again is, uh, is pretty heartbreaking as a father. And it's hard, to, it's hard to make sense of that. All across Nashville, people spent the day trying to make sense of the tragedy, including the Cathedral of the Incarnation. People came to Mass today full of hurt and pain and grief. And all throughout Mass, I saw tears of various parishioners that gathered. And they just need to come together and just be with another. And Christian singer Lauren Daigle postponing her album preview concert to hold a community-wide vigil in its place. Something has to change. Um, this can't keep happening. And I, I don't know how close to home it has to hit. In this moment, people say you forget about things that don't matter. Rally around the people that are hurting. And Pastor Henry Seely of Belonging Co. Church says that it's normal to feel pain and grief during times like this, but with faith, there's peace that surpasses understanding during these times. Amanda. All right, Ryan reporting for us tonight. Ryan, thank you. There is also a memorial growing right now outside of the Covenant School itself. Danielle Jackson is there. Danielle, an emotional night for people who have stopped by and continue to grow this memorial. Very emotional, Amanda. I can tell you, you can just feel the heaviness as people stopped and just prayed in front of that memorial site. I talked to several people who had tears in their eyes. They told me they were just at a loss for words and just wanted to come by here and pay their respects after today's mass shooting. Now, several people stopped by and left flowers and other items like teddy bears and stuffed bunny rabbits outside of the Covenant School this evening, many of whom had tears in their eyes as they stood and reflected on what happened today. I spoke with a man who lives in the area and he said he just had to stop by to pay his respects. And I also talked with two ladies who expressed their feelings about the deadly school shooting and the message to those who've been impacted. Kids should be able to go to school and have fun and learn, not be shot and die. We want to let people know that, hey, we're here as your you know, fellow Nashville citizens, and, mm -hmm. and we want to show that you, know, you are not alone. Just a very somber day here in Nashville for this entire community. Several churches, as Ryan mentioned, held vigils today, just praying and comforting people in this community during this difficult time. Now there's going to be a growing memorial outside of the Covenant School. I can imagine more people coming by, stopping by to leave flowers and prayers and just to pay their respects. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Danielle, thanks. Tonight we know there are so many families wondering how do I talk to my kids about what happened today? This is a story that hits home for one of our reporters, Joylynn Bukovac, and she may be able to offer families a little help. Joylynn is a school shooting survivor. She sat down with our Brendan Tierney to talk about how to process the trauma and how to talk with your children. Well, right now, the toughest part is the unknowns. Joylynn Bukovac reporting on something she knows all too well having to run and hide in her music class at Discovery Middle School in Madison, Alabama, when she was just 13 years old after witnessing a shooting in the hallway. There was the victim on the ground, um, and I knew it was bad. I knew I needed to get out. She says talking with parents and other witnesses today outside of Covenant Presbyterian School took her back to that day in 2010. A lot of this is really bringing up a lot of tough memories for me that I'm going through. Thinking about what her parents had to go through, praying she was alive and would come home. I can't even put into words what was going through my mind. I, my heart broke for those families. Joy Lynn says what happened to her made her want to become a news reporter. In this case, it's also to share her perspective with parents and their children. If I can just help one family, one person, that would make sharing my story worth it. But Joy Lynn says it takes time to process the trauma of a shooting like this. She was diagnosed with PTSD, but not until she was in college. She says it's important to be patient with your children, even if they didn't hear or see what happened at Covenant School. Just tell them 
that you're here to talk when they're ready. I think that's a big key. And don't make them feel guilty about not wanting to talk. Brendan Tierney, WSMV4. Well, school shootings have been a growing trend in America over the last few years. Data shows that they have steadily risen over the past two decades, peaking last year and then high once again this year. Our Nikki Latarulo spoke with a professor at UCLA who studies school shootings. And Nikki, what information did he have for you? Yeah, guys, tonight the natural, natural question people have is why, asking why. And as of right now, we do not have that answer. But tonight I spoke with someone who studies these acts of violence for a living. Ron Avi Astor is a social welfare professor at UCLA studying school safety. He focuses on school shootings and why suspects carry out these horrific acts. I asked him what his observations were specifically on Audrey Hale, and this is what he had to say. This one is so that the person will be remembered. Um, and what we've seen with the prior shooters, and we don't know about this one, but it could be that this is what she's doing, is that they're normally suicidal and homicidal. So they're not just suicidal. They want to take out a lot of other people when they go, and they want to get innocent victims that have nothing to do with it, preferably to create horror. And the goal is to be remembered. And although it sounds awful and terrible, their suicide is not in vain. And through research, Avi Astor says a lot of these school shootings are copycat attacks where the suspect spends time studying other mass shootings and wants to, quote, break records and be remembered. All right, Nikki reporting for us with some important context there. Our coverage continues in the WSMV for News app. Yeah, we're going to send alerts to your phone as this story continues to develop. All right, coming up in just a few minutes, the White House lowers flags to have staff as the country's commander in chief sends a message to Nashville. But right now, we do want to get a quick check of your weather. Meteorologist Dan Thomas joins us now to break down your forecast. Dan. And thankfully, guys, we have a peaceful night in downtown Nashville. Some cloud cover is on the way, but we do see some cool conditions out there. Let's go right to the weather headlines and you'll see what's coming our way. And it shows tomorrow will be much cooler than today. 70 to today in 50s and low 60s tomorrow. We turn frosty on Wednesday morning. Widespread frost expected through the area and then stormy come Friday night. And Friday night, a lot like last Friday night, there could be severe weather in Middle Tennessee. This yellow right now represents a 15% chance of severe weather in the mid-state and this far out. That's actually rather notable. Cloud cover advancing toward the mid-state right now. We have two cloud systems, one in the plains and one back in Texas. So though increased cloud cover overnight, maybe shake loose a shower or a sprinkle first thing tomorrow morning. But most of us will miss that as temperatures tumble back into the 40s tomorrow morning. So 10 degrees colder tomorrow morning than this morning. And again, maybe a passing sprinkle or shower. And then come tomorrow afternoon, decreasing clouds in highs in the 50s and lower most 60s. About 61 should do it right here in Nashville. Upper 50s tomorrow afternoon, Gallatin 57 in Millersville, 58 in Hartsville, and 58 over in Watertown. Notice the breeze. It'll be breezy at times tomorrow as that sun comes out in the afternoon. Partly cloudy at 1 o'clock in mostly cloudy or mostly sunny, I should say, at 4. Here's Wednesday morning, and here's that frost potential just for one morning. Low to mid 30s, very likely. Once we get into the afternoon, temperatures a little bit higher. The breeze will be gone. It's going to be a nice, bright, sunny day on Wednesday, so looking pretty good. 58 degrees in Cookville, 64 in Nashville, and 64 in Murfreesboro. The pollen stays high. It's been high since the weekend, and it will stay high for several days to come right through the end of the week. Once we get into Friday, there'll be some showers around. We have a 50-50 rain chance during the day on Friday. A first alert weather day for Friday night. Again, strong to severe storms will move through. There could be some damaging wind gusts. There could be some isolated tornadoes. Mid 70s on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The weekend looks outstanding. A little breezy, but mild on Saturday, 74, 73 on Sunday, close to 80 on Monday of next week. Back to you. All right, Dan, thanks. Reaction continues to pour in as people here in the mid state and across the country really Try to make sense of this tragedy. Our Lydia Fielder is back with us tonight with what state and federal leaders are saying about this horrible incident. Yeah, tonight we are hearing from President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris with flags flying at half staff at the White House in honor of Nashville. Listen. It's heartbreaking, uh, a family's worst nightmare. And uh, we have to do more to stop gun violence. It's ripping our communities apart. 
We do know that because of this terrible act of violence, parents have lost children, families have lost loved ones, and this community has been changed forever. So to the people of Nashville, please know that we are thinking of you and that you are in our prayers and in our hearts. Former President Barack Obama also tweeted, quote, we are failing our children. Guns are now the leading cause of death for children in the U.S. Michelle and I mourn with the students and families of the Covenant School today. And we're also hearing from Governor Bill Lee on Twitter. Earlier today, he tweeted, I am closely monitoring this tragic situation at Covenant and the Tennessee Department of Safety and the Tennessee Highway Patrol are assisting local law enforcement and first responders at the scene. As we continue to respond, please join us in praying for the school, congregation, and Nashville community. And we are hearing from Nashville city leaders as well. That's including Mayor John Cooper and Vice Mayor Jim Shulman, who both say they are proud of the way the city's police responded to the scene. Let us praise our first responders. 14 minutes, 14 minutes. I believe under, under fire, running, to gunfire. Guns are quick. They don't give you much time. So even in a remarkably fast response, there was not enough time. This country has been talking about this for years in terms of the number of mass shootings and other things. And, and now it's, it, it hits home here in Nashville. And uh, people getting assault weapons legally, um, uh, we have, uh, this country has got to step up and do something about it. White House officials say flags there will be flown at half staff all week long. According to the Associated Press, this is the eighth mass killing at an American school since 2006. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more coverage. We want to get a look at the officers who Metro Police say shot and killed the shooter. Officer Rex Engelbert is a four year MNPD veteran and Officer Colazzo is a nine year veteran with the force. Now we are going to continue to follow this story as it develops on air as well as online. Tomorrow we will be live here starting at 4 a.m. with continuing coverage. And you can stay up to date anytime in the WSMB4 News app. Be safe and have a good night.